How do you succeed as a developer in the age of AI? You can do the work, but how do you get the gigs? No matter how much AI trims down the dev workforce, someone is still going to be managing all these repositories and running all these prompts. So it's all about being that guy or gal, the one who gets the gig. I'm Cameron. I personally sell about 1 to 1.5 million a year in work. Other people in my company also sell, but that's my own book of business, most of which is inside sales. I sort of have to sell that much because my software and web development uh, company has a team and offices, and we use a lot of tools that are getting to be expensive, high cursor, but we've gotten plenty of gigs after the AI coding boom. So I just wanted to give you a quick crash course on what I've learned about selling more dev work now that AI is a thing. Here's my top tips. Number one, actually talk about AI with your clients and potential clients. I've seen a lot of situations where a you know potential client or a client is in a room with a developer, and as soon as the dev starts talking about AI, it's like they broke the ice, the client is super relaxed, they're able to talk about it, but they've sort of been holding back because they don't know what the developer's perspective on it. Are, are they very anti-AI? Are they using it? Are they really excited about it? And so they don't want to bring it up in case it's a taboo subject. And, you know, uh, talking about AI with your client brings them inside the process. And the more that we can kind of bring people inside the process, show them inside the black box, show them what's going on, the more they will actually trust us. So being honest about what you're experiencing with AI and saying like, hey, I actually think this project is going to go 25% faster because we have AI now. I don't think it's going to go double as fast, but I do think that, you know, this is going to be cheaper than if you did it a few years ago. Um, and it's going to be more effective. AI's to this point, it's helping us with these things, but it's not helping us with these things. And I think it could go this way or could go that way in the next few years. And we plan on pivoting based on this. So just talking about it and being very vocal um, is really helpful. And also just, you know, talking about AI and how it's being adopted into the coding process definitely lets people know that you are keeping your skills sharp, you're staying up on top of what's coming down the pipeline in terms of development infrastructure and uh, the way that development is done. And you're going to be an efficient uh, person to manage their project even as the dev world changes. I've gotten a lot of gigs uh, at this point because of just my constant talk about AI online. And I've really gotten validated for a lot of gigs too, where people are looking for someone who's going to be really forward thinking and, uh, and they're able to sort of integrate AI into things. A lot of times too, what people want, they think is AI, but it's actually like just I, you know, and, uh, so being able to kind of use the AI buzzword uh, a little bit and then be able to talk about what we're really trying to do, which might just be conditional logic, um, is really helpful. Um, so number two, this is a big one. Be nice. The amount of developers and IT people who are just not very polite, they kind of have a chip on their shoulder, they're rude to people. It's super high. We've all experienced people like that. And so people call those people for help when they have to, not when they want to. There has been a moat where project managers and, you know, visionaries and uh, CEOs and different business people have tried to go without talking to the dev team as long as possible because they know that it's going to be a difficult, expensive, irritating conversation. Um, and oftentimes just because the devs and IT people aren't very nice and we just can't afford to do that anymore. It is of course very natural. When you work in an industry where you have to know seven programming languages, you have to configure a database, you have to set up repositories and you have to work on bugs inside of a super, super crazy layer of abstraction just because someone in project management can't remember to click on these three buttons and they need a workaround built or, you know, you watch the way that e-commerce customers use a website and they're like goldfish. They have no memory and they you you can barely get them to do what you want them to do or what they want to do. Um, it, it's just really when you're sort of working at that sort of um, in that sort of really intellectual place and you're seeing people constantly who are at their worst intellectually, it is really easy to develop a chip on your shoulder. And so I'm really calling us to change as an industry and say like, you know, yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter how intelligent someone is. It doesn't really matter what moment of their intelligence you're seeing them at. And also just, you know, recognizing the different types of intelligence. Someone who's a project manager might have all these, um, you know, skill sets that you're just not aware 
are, you know, even categories that they're not demonstrating to you when they're talking about a dev project. All you see is the things that they don't know. And so, you know, just being kind to people creates this environment where people can come to us and um, they can be welcomed and they will feel comfortable talking about what's going on. So being nice, being personable goes a really long way. Um, so definitely hone your skills to be even sharper. You want to be like AI literate and code literate and business literate. So there's this book by Shel Silverstein. Uh, it's a children's book called Where the Sidewalk Ends. Um, and I always like to think of that. Um, where the AI ends. You need to be the person at the end of the AI sidewalk. When the AI ends and we can't use ChatGPT for this anymore, then we call Cameron. So it's really important to be someone who is able to solve the most complex problems and work on solutions that are above that which an AI can work on. And there's still tons of those, even stuff that is just outside of AI's training data. Yeah, an AI might be smart enough to solve it, but it might not have the training data necessary to actually put all the pieces together. And so you're the one, you're, you're the hero, you're where the sidewalk ends. Um, so definitely, you know, uh, breaking down and charging for all of the human parts of the solution. Uh, it is really common for developers to, you know, sort of only charge for the, the coding parts and then not realize how much work they're actually doing. That is the important work. So they'll be doing a lot of, uh, you know, technical uh, project management and writing tech specs and doing discovery and they'll be, you know, testing different things and they'll be, you know, um, trying trying to sort out all this stuff and, and talking to people and all of that like in between work takes up an insane amount of time. The in between work where you actually are identifying what to do, testing it, seeing how it works, communicating with people, all of that sort of engineering work uh, where you are building the infrastructure and working around the infrastructure, it's very important to actually charge for that because the coding part, yeah, it might be speeding up a little bit and it might speed up even more. I mean, if if AI coding really goes the way that, that it's going to go, the code is not going to be the part that takes a lot of time. And so you really need to make sure that you are breaking down and, and charging for the time, the knowledge, the effort that you're spending appropriately in such a way that your skill is actually recognized and compensated. So um, I'll make some more videos about that, but um, definitely recognizing all of the pieces that actually go into a project is really important. And being able to predict and work on that. I'll give you a quick example. So for instance, um, you might say instead of, um, you know, instead of a client who comes to you and says, hey, this this particular tool, like is, uh, we want to use this, we want to integrate it, a normal developer is going to say, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, well, it's going to take me this long to do and, and then we'll get it integrated. A better way to do it is to say, okay, well, sure. First off, would you like me to do a little bit of research and see if this is the best tool to fit into the existing infrastructure? Okay, great. Um, so I can do that. And then, you know, once we actually identify a tool, I want to test the implementation of this tool versus what we're already doing. And I'm going to run an A-B test and it's going to take two weeks. We're going to capture this much data. Um, how does that sound? Then we'll know definitively at the end, based on metrics, whether that thing was helpful or not. That's a great way to manage something and actually create more value. You actually create more value for the company because you're helping them identify whether they're hitting their objectives and you're also doing more work and you're involved in the process of the work and not just the actual coding. You're not just like sticking an embed code on a page and calling it good. Um, and that's where like, uh, focusing on problem solving and not just building is really, really important. Help clients solve their problems, brainstorm, test different solutions, help them actually determine the requirements. Say, oh, you don't have all the all the tech requirements put together. I can help with that. Let's let's work on that together. You could, you know, either maybe charge them for that time or just do it to get the gig. That's totally fine. I usually will just help people put together the requirements for free. Um, help them delete requirements that aren't necessary. So if you're like, man, I don't really think this is going to be effective. Make that recommendation. Even if it cuts work off your plate, it will help them trust you more. And uh, 
you know, the developers who are wiped out fastest by AI are definitely going to be the ones who are just, you know, taking A and plugging it into B without thinking. The developers who are really focused on becoming an integrated part of problem solving with their clients, they're going to really go the distance. Um, and finally, be like ethics, privacy, and security aware. You don't want to give legal advice where you're not, you know, uh, qualified to give legal advice. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to pontificate, all that sort of thing. But knowing about uh, legality, privacy, accessibility, security, all of those complex uh, pieces that go into the infrastructure means that you know, people are going to see you as a consultant who can help them succeed, not just a developer who can help them implement stuff after they go through all the work of figuring out what they want to implement. The more you know about regulation, the more you know about what's going on in a particular industry and all that sort of thing, the more that people are going to come to you. And certainly that can get, they can validate your opinion um, afterwards, using a lawyer, using an attorney, um, you know, going to uh, going and getting a third party security review. So you don't have to shoulder all of it. And you can tell them exactly where your knowledge base stops, what you're responsible for and what you're not responsible for. But knowing about as much as you possibly can makes you way more valuable on the team. So I hope these tips are really helpful. Um, thanks so much. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.